Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I've got a, a letter from Don I've been saving to share. And I'm going to do it on my camera, my computer camera. So i got to pull this forward. Okay, it should work. It's small straws in a soft wind is the first one, and this is, these are all good. There's three in all, and one is one of the ones that don't contribute regularly. This is, listen to this. This really spoke to my heart. Stay focused. Distraction is an issue that can take you off course. Determine to stay spiritually connected and recognize the ways in which you are diverted. There is nothing more important than being, than being one with me. With no space between us, develop a listening ear and a heart that is moved by the slightest move of my spirit. Here's the word put with it. See, as you notice, it's not a prophecy, it's an instruction. We need both. 1 Corinthians 7, verse 35. And this I say for your own profit, not that I may put a leash on you, but for what is proper, and that you may serve the Lord without distraction. All right, I believe that's where he talked about best to not marry. Getting married is a distraction. You're not commanded not to marry. Like it says in that verse, this is not to put a leash on you. It's not a new law he was making. He was just letting people know if you get married, you're going to get distracted. It'll be harder for you to serve the Lord. Moving on. This message is also titled Restoration by the same person that I shared like a week ago, and that message was titled Restoration by you know, Given to CCM. So I'm wondering if, if they made a mistake and titled it the same thing by mistake, or is it part two? Does it matter? I don't know, but the wording is great, so I'm going to share it. It was received October 12th, 2021 between 5 10 a.m. and 5 50 a.m. and the last message I shared called restoration given to CCM was received in September if I remember correctly I looked it up a few days ago when I got this all right let me get a sip of water now this is very encouraging my children, I need you to know that darkness is not what you should look forward to. There is more coming that darkness has no part in. Where there is no wickedness, no sin, no evil, there is joy, peace, tranquility fellowship with me and your brethren in wholesome love and righteousness. Now, where do you think he's talking about? Doesn't that sound heavenly? It does to me. I am coming to bring true peace you have all wanted. I think they left out a word. I am coming to bring true peace which you have all wanted, maybe. For I am the one who can give you true peace. Okay, that's the end of that sentence. I'm sorry. The periods kind of just disappear. There is so much prepared for you, my children. So much for you to inherit. As it was in the beginning, as it should have been. I am bringing about the restoration of all things. Your eyes should be on me and all that I represent. I am your joy and your true peace. I am the fullness that fills all in all." Unquote. Hmm. I didn't see a beginning quote. Oh, it's 
at the very beginning when he said, my children, the quote started there, sorry. I was then asked to turn to John 2, 15 through 17. All right, so I went there. Here's what it says in the blueletterbible.org, John 2, 15 in the NASB 95. And he made a scourge of cords and drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and he poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who were selling the doves, he said, Take these things away. Stop making my father's house a place of business. John 2.17 says, His disciples remembered that it was written, quote, and this is all caps, which tells us in the NASB, this is one of the features I love about it, when it's all caps, you know it was a prophecy written in the Old Testament. Zeal for your house will consume me, unquote. Now, the Lord continues. The cleansing of my house on a greater scale is coming. All who will hear should hear. This is not the time to be stuck in man's doctrine that is not of me. It has led so many people astray. Lukewarm people, lacking knowledge. All right, back to the word of the Lord. If you say you love me, I'm sorry, my lip is, I don't know why it's bothering me. It has a little teeny piece of skin hanging on it. You know, you want to bite it off. Back to this. If you say you love me, you will keep my words. You will obey my commandments. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you, for, set you free from all the lies and deceits of the enemy of your soul. Too late for so many. I, th I added that. Sorry. Turn now and know the truth. It is not hidden from you. It has always been with you. It is the truth. Capital T. Your only way, capital W, to the Father. Come to me. I call you to come. Seek me, and you will find me. Seek me with all your heart. I dwell with him who is humble and of a contrite spirit, who trembles at my word. I am calling you now. Come before it is too late return um yeah return to me repent and i will receive you your savior yahushua hamashiach i love you i will always do and i'm wondering if that's a, typed out right because i always i will always do so probably left out the word so our lord knows how to speak right you know there's a bunch of scriptures here you can look up psalms 51 17 isaiah 66 2 isaiah 60 verses 18 through 23 revelation 22 3 and 17 so that would be 22 verse 17 Ephesians 1, 23, 1, verse 23. John 2, verses 15 through 17 that I read. John 8, verses 31 and 32. John 14, verse 6. Matthew 7, 7 through 8. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Jeremiah 29, 13 through 14a. I'll put those in the description box if you, uh, but I called them out so that those who get this on a cell phone, maybe you can't see that, but you want to look them up. So you can pause, write it down, pause, write it down. So you can write it all down and then look them up. This was dated October 14th. Oh, by the way, today is Monday, October the 18th. All right. At a time when you feel like you have no expectation, 
there will be a small series of events which will enable you to expect. Pause. I wanted to share how I've been feeling a little bit here lately. Just last night I was telling the Lord, Lord, I feel like I have nothing to look forward to. I want out of here so bad, not just out of this place, but off this planet. I want to come outside of time, get my glorified body, and come back so I can really do some more good. I don't feel like I'm doing that much good. Maybe I am. Maybe you're sharing... Some of you are sharing, and, and maybe some of your loved ones or friends, people share, might share it, we share it. And maybe one here and one there is, is not taking the uh, thing we don't want to take, the mark of the beast. Or maybe somebody down the line is getting saved. I don't know. I hope so. All right. But I was saying, Lord. I feel like I, you know, I don't want to be here for another Christmas without family. Christmas is always a special time. It was a joyous time. We always celebrated the birth of Christ, even though we learned, me and my children, and therefore my uh, son-in-law and grandson, also, that Jesus wasn't born in December. Y'all know that, right? He was born, I believe, from what the Bible tells us during Tabernacles, which means his birthday is coming up, his true birthday. All right, it starts at the full moon around the 20th, 19th into the 20th, and goes until the 27th or the 28th, depending on where you are in the world, I guess. That's close enough. The reason I say this is because when he was born, everybody had everybody in Joseph's family was congregating to Bethlehem. The people who still lived in Bethlehem, which could have been Joseph's father, could have been Joseph's uncle, his father wasn't still living. The family that was from Bethlehem, he was from Bethlehem. Everybody had to return to their hometown for taxes. Well, how smart was it of the Romans to say, hey, look, we know that during the Feast of Tabernacles, everybody returns to their hometown. What better way to get a census? That part might even be an outright lie, but it got written. I don't think it's an outright lie because it's in the Word of God. You see what I'm saying? I think the Romans were smart and said, we know everybody's going to return to their hometown. What better way for us to take a census? without us going door to door. We don't know who all's living out in the country, so to speak, out in the desert, out in the byways and highways where we don't want to go. Let's just let them all come in and we'll just get our census then. All right, here's another clue. Jesus was laid in a manger. If you do some research on what the people do for the Feast of Tabernacles. They make this temporary shelter called a suko, a sukkot, S-U-K-K-O-T, or tabernacle. And they make something akin to a manger. It looks like what you feed an animal out of. They put their bread in it. Their, whatever they're going to eat on while they're sleeping in they literally go in their Sukkot, or they used to. They might not all do it now, but they would actually sleep outside in this little tent or temporary shelter. And they would have a manger with their food in it. Jesus is the bread of life. So what better place to lay the bread of life than the place where the people laid their bread. You see the connection? He was laid in a manger. It makes sense that by the time Mary and Joseph got to Bethlehem, all the other family had arrived, so the people who had real housing, those houses were full. And there was no room at the end because other family members had already booked up the inns. 
It's not like today where you can find something. A motel, hotel, something, even if it costs a lot. All right, back to this. Okay, I was, that's what I was talking about, about Jesus being born, probably during tabernacles. Plus, in December, sheep are not out in the field by night because it's too cold, so they would be put up in their barns for the winter. Another clue. All right. So I was saying to the Lord, I, you know, I don't, I don't celebrate Christmas anymore. I don't buy gifts. He told me to quit buying gifts. He did not tell me not to decorate, but he does. He did say he loathes the paganism. So what parts of Christmas are pagan? You can do the research and find out for yourself. If we're still here, which I don't believe we are, I think we're going outside of time any day now, probably this week during Tabernacles. That's my guess and my hope. Okay? So anyway, back to this. At a time when you feel like you have no expectation, there will be... Let me check my position. It's all right. There will be a small series of events which will enable you to expect. Follow these. Search for expectation. It will surely come, and then you can move on into belief. At this point, events will begin to happen if you do not give up. I can't see us coming this far and giving up. I pray none of you have or are about to or will. Jesus continues, I know it has been a long time coming to this feeling of no expectation. Trust me. I could so relate to this because every day is exactly the same. I have no visitors. I cannot associate with these people. Every last one but one has accepted the mark of the beast. Of course, they don't believe that. I tried to tell some of them. They didn't listen. And we've been told through different messages not to associate with them. Plus, the Word of God says, if someone has a form of godliness but denies the power thereof, with such turn away. I'll look that up and put it in the description box if you want to know where it is. I can't think of it offhand. Here's the verse that's put with it. Isaiah 41.10 in the ESV, English Standard Version. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And that was given to Bev Robinson. Last one. Insert yourself into situations I am bringing across your path. This will relate. Some of you can relate to this. Here it's too late for them. My still small voice is speaking to you constantly. Listen to me and comply. Those inklings within your heart to move are as legitimate as the sun rising every morning. You ever have an inkling in your heart when you're at the store and you see somebody and you're feeling a nudge to go talk to them? Obey that nudge and go just tell them, you know Jesus as your Savior? Whatever you're feeling led to say. All right, you have sometimes placed your expectation and trust in many things and have experienced being shortchanged. Boy, howdy, that's the truth, isn't it? That is not so with me. I will never misguide you. Be willing to step out of your comfort zone. Joshua 1.9 is added with this. N-O-G. can't remember what that stands for. I have commanded you, be strong and courageous. 
don't tremble or be terrified because Yahweh your Elohim is with you wherever you go. And this was given to Kevin Robinson. I pray you were blessed by this today. And that we will keep looking up. We do have much expectation to look forward to. We have heaven, the presence of one another, being in the presence of the Father and his holy angels, and Jesus, our Savior. What more could we ask for? No eye has seen, no ear has heard of the wonderful and glorious things that the Lord has prepared for those who love him. I can't even figure out where to point. <laughs> okay. So with that, I'm going to say I plead the blood of Jesus over this video and over each and every one of us and our devices and our internet connections. Pray I get to see you soon. I hope. I'm going to say I hope. I always pray Father's will be done. Do we have another week? Do we have two, ten, twenty weeks? I hope not. I hope it's any day now, right? I know you think so, too. When you're ready to go, you know it. <laughs> okay, bye for now, brothers and sisters. I'll talk to you later.